So I wanted to go over some testing of three wire sensor circuits today. This is an area where I've noticed some technicians struggle and honestly I will see technicians go through a lot of extra steps trying to diagnose an issue related to one of these three wire sensors. Uh, what I mean by three wire sensor, well that could be a AC system high pressure switch. In this case, that's what we're going to be testing today. That could be an accelerator pedal position sensor. It could be a brake pedal position sensor. We have multiple three wire sensors on our vehicles. It doesn't matter whose vehicle we're talking about. Uh, and any manufacturer you want to name uses a, a lot of three wire sensors. And they're, it's very easy to test and verify that the circuits or working without having to go through a lot of steps. So in this case, I have an AC compressor that's not engaging. So let's take a look at some data on our scan tool because it's always the first place that you should start. Is start by checking your data. So I'm gonna start this car. We're gonna take some look at, a look at some data and see if it tells us why the AC compressor is not engaging on the scan tool itself. Okay, so we have the engine running. We're taking a look at our scan tool data here. And it tells us in no uncertain terms, AC compressor clutch inhibit reason. High side pressure out of range. That's the reason my AC compressor clutch will not engage. If I look at my high side pressure sensor, it's reading zero PSI. So we definitely have something wrong here. So let's take a closer look at this. So if you'll notice on the AC gauges, we're reading about 70 to 75 PSI high side pressure. So obviously the sensor is not reporting the truth back to the engine control module. Whether it be a bad sensor or a bad circuit, that's what we need to figure out. And it's gonna be very easy to tell what's taking place. So I actually have a diagram here of a basic three wire sensor. It's always going to have a low reference or a ground, the ground inside the control module, right? It's always going to have a signal circuit, which means you almost always can see that on your scan tool. That's why it's always important to look at data first, especially before you unplug anything. Because if the sensor signal is skewed, it could be because you have corrosion on a terminal. If you unplug a connector and plug it back in, that problem could go away, at least temporarily. Then we have a reference voltage circuit, which is gonna be the power provided to that sensor by the control module in charge. Reference voltage could be a five volt, an eight volt, a nine volt, or a 12 volt reference. And that's where you're gonna to need to rely on your schematics or maybe even a circuit system description and operation uh, to figure out which one you're dealing with. Because one thing I have noticed in, in the, a service manual sometimes, it may not tell me exactly what that reference voltage is supposed to be but sometimes it may tell me in the schematic. Sometimes I may have to go to a description and operation for the particular component I'm dealing with to get that information and know what voltage I'm supposed to be checking for. So there's a number of different tests that we can do here. We know the sensor for, at least in the scan tool data, the sensor showing zero PSI. And we know we have 70 PSI, 75 PSI on our gauge here. So there's obviously pressure in, in the AC system. The ECM is not going to allow the AC compressor clutch to come on because the sensor is reporting no pressure in the system. If we turn on the AC compressor clutch and the system's empty, you know, it's lost all of its refrigerant, it's lost its oil, the compressor is going to burn up. It's just a fail safe. The ECM is going to say, nope, I cannot turn that clutch on. I don't care how many times you push the button inside the car. Let's take a look at the schematic real quick. <clears throat> so you can see here, AC refrigerant pressure sensor, and it reports back to the engine control module. Low reference circuit, or the ground inside the module for the sensor, signal circuit, and that little arrow off to the side of it right there means that the control module's monitoring it, which means I should have data I can look at. Reference voltage, and in this case you can see it's five volts. Okay, so we're going to do some real quick and simple tests here to hopefully in just a couple of minutes be able to, to determine do I have a wire harness issue 
an ECM issue or is it just purely a bad sensor? So we're gonna unplug the sensor. This one's not easy to get to, but it's not bad. Okay. So we have that sensor unplugged and you can see the connector. I just exposed it right here next to the horn. It looks pretty much like that connector representation there. And we do have, on one side of it, we have low reference. On the other side, we have reference voltage. In the middle, we have our signal circuit. So let's do a couple of tests here. One way that you can test a low reference circuit, or this ground inside the control module. So I can actually take a test light. And I can connect one end to my low reference circuit. So let's do that now. Hopefully I got the right circuit. I'm not exactly looking at my schematic at the moment. You don't want to take the other end of your test light and go to battery positive because that's a ground circuit, right? If the ground circuit's intact inside that control module, I should be able to light a test light. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to come over here to battery positive. And I am going to connect this. I want to make sure it's in the camera where everyone can see it. I'm going to come over here to battery positive. Connect my test light. If I can keep it in the right spot, you should be able to see that that test light is lit up. That test light has a very small bulb in it. Let's try a test light with a little bit bigger bulb in it. Let's see if that works for us. So I'm going to get rid of this test light. I'm going to give a test light that has more of a peanut bulb in it, not this little very small little glass bulb like this one has. Choosing the right test light is also very important, by the way. You know, when it comes to doing diagnostics and you're relying on a test light by itself, you want to be careful which one you use. There's a lot of different test lights out there in the market. I tend to stay away from the ones that have LEDs in them. So this test light has a peanut bulb in it, like a third brake light style bulb. And I hope this test light still works. Okay, right there. That test light lit up as well. So, the car is beeping at me, so I'm going to check and see what it's, uh, what's going on with the car. So give me one second. Okay, so we verified that my low reference circuit or my ground circuit will illuminate a test lamp when I go from the low reference circuit to battery positive. That test passed. I didn't see any issues there. As you can see, the test light lit up. Next test I'm going to do. We have a reference voltage here which in this case is five volts. You saw that on the schematics. We have our low reference circuit. So I'm taking my positive and negative lead of my DVOM and going between my reference voltage and my low reference. So let's bring our DVOM up and let's see what we read. Okay, we got 4.999 volts. It's a five volt reference. That's an acceptable number. So two, te two test steps in, I know my low reference circuits capable of carrying the load of that test light. So then I go from my reference voltage to my low reference of my meter. I see it. I've got approximately five volts and in a diagnostic test step for these reference voltage circuits, it'll tell you test for between like 4.98 to 5.02 volts in the case of a five volt reference circuit. Of course, you need to apply that to whatever reference voltage circuit you have, five, eight, nine, or 12 volt. So I want to do one more step here, and then I want to go back and look at some data on my vehicle. So one more very quick and easy step that we can do. We're still not sure about the signal circuit, if the signal's getting from this particular high pressure switch, AC high pressure switch, back to my engine control module over here next to the battery. I should be able to perform a very easy test that will tell me if the signal circuit's intact, and if the control module can see that signal circuit. So they do eventually tell you this through a diagnostic test 
after your 10 steps or more into this, but here's something that we can do. Take a jumper wire, and you always wanna make sure that, I mean, this is a homemade jumper wire that I made, and it's got a two amp fuse in it. Uh, just some cheap stuff I ordered off of Amazon. You always wanna make sure your jumper wire has a fuse. And the reason why I say this, we already know that there's not any shorts here or here. You know, like a short to voltage, like a short to like a 12 volt battery voltage source. So we're safe even without a fuse in the jumper wire. However, or maybe even a short to ground somewhere in the harness. Um, let's say that there is a short somewhere and I hook up a jumper wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up a jumper wire We're gonna hook up the jumper wire and we're gonna go from reference voltage, right here, over to signal, right here. But without my fuse here, if there was a short somewhere and I ended up flowing a lot of current back through the signal circuit to that engine control module, that thousand dollar engine control module is gonna go away quick, fast, and in a hurry. That's why you want your fuse. It doesn't take much to pop a two amp fuse and in that case, we're probably safe. We're not gonna damage the control module. You could even put a one amp fuse in here if you, if you wanted to. So let me hook this up. So I'm gonna disconnect my meter. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my jumper wire in between five volt reference and signal. And we're gonna take a look and see what happened with our data on our scan tool. Okay, so I have my jumper wire in place. You see it right here. And I'm going between signal and reference voltage on my connector. Now remember when we looked this at this initially, it was reading zero PSI and the ECM said, can't turn the compressor on. So now let's take a look at our data and see if it changed. So you can see our data now shows 499.4 PSI for the high side pressure sensor at 4.98 volts. So what does that mean? Well, I just eliminated the signal circuit as being the cause of the problem and eliminated the ECM as being a potential problem. So we verified low reference or the ground. We verified five volt reference voltage. And by using the jumper wire between the five volt reference voltage circuit and the signal circuit. We can now see that the ECM saw the change. It registered the change, meaning the ECM is doing its job. And we had, that only leaves us with the AC high pressure sensor is being faulted. So I'd have to replace that sensor, verify my repair and verify that the AC compressor came back on and it was cooling like it was supposed to in this case. So I'm gonna disconnect my jumper wire. Let's see if it goes back to zero. Okay, so it immediately went back to zero. Let me hook that jumper wire back up and let's see if we can catch the change. Change happened immediately. That just proves our point. You got a bad, in this case, uh, AC pressure sensor. All the circuits are fine. Uh, one caution. When you're using a jumper wire and you're going to jumper, say like a reference voltage to a signal circuit and do a test like this, no matter what kind of sensor you're dealing with on, on no, what kind of three wire sensor you're dealing with on a vehicle, make sure you have your schematics, make sure you're using all the correct terminals in your connector in view, make sure you're hooking this up correctly. If I ever shorted that signal circuit to a 12 volt battery source, you know, like a, a 12 volt circuit in the wire harness somewhere, that's gonna flow a lot of current through that signal circuit and right into that engine control module. And again, like I was saying earlier, that engine control module is gonna go away and I'm gonna have to replace it. A, sh a direct short to voltage feeding back to a module on a vehicle, these modules are very sensitive. And if I pop that module, uh, this particular one, 
uh, retail on it. It's about 1100 bucks. Uh, plus there's all the programming time and the reprogramming of the keys and everything that goes along with it. So just a little caution there, be very careful. But any three wire sensor that you're dealing with, you can test this way. And in just a few minutes, we eliminated any possibility other than just a bad switch. Hope this helps out.